Hey what's up YouTubers my name is Tanmay Sakpal and I'm back with another video tutorial on digital electronics boolean algebra and logic gates so in this video tutorial we are going to be understanding the concept of parity in digital electronics we are also going to see the type of parity and type of parity schemes that are used and we'll understand how parity bit helps us in error detection so before we start off with this tutorial if you are new on this channel make sure you subscribe to this channel because there are a lot of information technology and computer science oriented tutorials on this channel and more are coming soon so you'll get notified whenever i upload a new video and for that you can just turn on the notifications as well also there are a lot of video tutorials on digital electronics boolean algebra and logic gates in fact i have a complete playlist so what i'm going to do is i'm going to link that playlist in the description of this video and you can also see a card floating on the top right corner so if you want you can check out the topics covered in in this entire playlist okay so with that being said let's get started with today's topic so what is parity and what is this even odd parity scheme so if you study digital electronics you definitely come across this word parity and this concept has floated around a lot of times because it is a very important concept to know in digital electronics and communication systems so i have a little bit of theory which is written so let me just first read out the theory and then we'll understand how how it works in reality and in practicality so in digital electronics parity bit so it's a bit is a technique that checks whether data has been lost or written over when it is moved from one place in storage to another or when it is transmitted between computers okay so basically what this point is saying is we are performing error detection so a parity bit adds checksum into data checksum is nothing but one extra value which helps us in error detection so into the data that enables the target device to determine whether the data was received correctly or not essentially it is another way of saying that we are again performing error detection now there are two different schemes that is even parity scheme and odd parity scheme so i'll just read out the theory and i'll obviously explain to you and it will be very clear so make sure you watch this video till the end because i'll explain to you how the working goes so in even parity the number of bits with a value of 1 are counted if that number is odd then the parity bit value is set to 1 to make the total number of ones in the set an even number if the number of bits with a value of 1 is even the parity bit value is set to 0 so that the total number of ones in the set remains as an even number okay so this was the theoretical explanation i'll explain to you practically but let's first read out the odd parity definition so in odd parity if the number of bits with a value of 1 is even the parity bit value is set to 1 to make the total number of ones in the set an odd number and if the number of bits with a value of 1 is odd the parity bit value is set to 0 so that the total number of ones remains an odd number okay so why are we doing this so let's let's take a scenario wherein we have to transfer or transmit a data so let that data be 1000 so this is a digital data right so it's a binary code or binary number which we have to transfer from a so this is a is a physical location or a computer to b okay now in a very ideal condition the data should be received exactly as 100 however what happens is in most cases during communication or transmission there are some interferences in the transmission and the data might get corrupted in transit so if it if it is on the internet while transmitting the data might be corrupted and there might be some issue in the internet and the data received at the receiver end that is at b it might get corrupted and there might get one error value added so a 100 can be received as 1001 or anything for that matter so the bits might change right this is how the data gets corrupted so how do we check that the data is corrupted in this case what what exactly mechanism should we apply so here's where the parity concept and the even par parity and odd parity schemes is applied to perform error detection okay so how do we do that so let's first take an example now let's start off with even parity first so let me just first erase this out so i hope you understood what we are going to do we are going to transmit a digital data with even parity from point a to b so we have a which is a computer at a particular location now again we have to transfer 100 and we have b at a particular location so we have to transfer it to b so before we actually transfer this what we're going to do is we are going to perform even parity so in even parity as i mentioned let's read the theory once again the number of bits with a value of 1 are counted so the number of bits with value of 1 is 1 right so that is the number of bits high in this entire data block so if that number is odd the parity bit value is set to 1 to make the total number of ones in the set an even number so in this case yes odd number of inputs are high right only one value is 1 which is a odd number so what we are going to do is we are going to add one parity bit which is going to be 1 to this data at the lsb so the number is going to then look like 1 000 
and this one extra parity bit. Now this second statement, if the number of bits with the value of one is even, so in this case it is not even. In this case the number of ones is only one, which is an odd number. So that's why we added one. Okay, so this one is appended to this data. Now what happens is this data is sent to B. So B receives one zero 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 one. Now remember that A and B know the case that they are using even parity for checking data. Okay, so both the systems need to understand that the ending data or the last bit is going to be a parity bit and it is using an even parity scheme. So while sending, let's say for example, there was some error in this in this bit and it got flipped to one. Okay, so this bit was having an error. So when it was sent via the internet, this bit got flipped to one. So now at the end user wherein the receiver B is there, he is going to take this parity bit. He is going to see it one. Now he knows that A has used even parity scheme. So if this is one, he should know that the total number of ones in the actual data, that is these four bits needs to be odd, right? But here you can see that because of the error, now there are two number of bits which are high. So the B easily understands that there is some error in this data because this bit got flipped. So there are two bits which are corresponding to one. So this is not what B wanted because B saw the parity bit as set as one, which means that B knew that when A was transferring the data, the original data had odd number of bits. That's why he added one to make it even, right? But now when he receives the data, he sees that the data already has even number of bits which are high. And even then the parity is set to be one, which means that there is some issue in the data and some data has got corrupted. So that's where B understands that, okay, the data is corrupted and then it sends another signal to A to resend the data. So this was even parity. Similarly, let's try to understand a case with odd parity. Now again, we have A and B who want to communicate. So A again, let's take that same number one triple zero and now we we'll apply odd parity scheme. So in odd parity scheme, if the number of bits with a value of one is even, the parity bit value is set to one to make the total number of ones in the set an odd number. And if the number of bits with a value of one is odd, the parity bit is set to zero so that the total number of ones is set remains an odd number. Okay, so this is exactly opposite to even parity. What we're going to do is we're going to check the number of ones. So we have only one bit which is high. So one is odd, right? One is odd. So here what the parity is going to be is that zero because we're using odd parity scheme. And remember that A and B both know that it is an odd parity scheme, right? So now this data is going to be sent over the internet to B. So B gets one triple zero and then one parity bit. Let's say again, this bit gets flipped. So what it actually gets is one zero zero one. Okay, because of some error in the internet connection and some transmission error, B got 1001 and then the parity bit 0. So now B checks this data. He knows that A has used odd parity scheme. So he knows that since the parity bit is 0, he knows that the data should have odd number of ones. But since the data has even number of ones because of the error, this bit got flipped. So there are two ones, right? Two ones in the data. So now B knows, okay, even when the parity bit was set to zero, the data was supposed to have odd number of inputs high, but we've got even number of inputs high, which means that there is some issue in the data. So this is where obviously he doesn't know that which data is being corrupted over here. We are only performing error detection. And in both cases, we are only performing error detection. We are not performing error correction over here, but we are at least detecting that there is some issue in the data and some data bits are flipped. So again, B communicates that message to A saying that the data is corrupted, kindly resend the data again. So this is how parity scheme and parity error detection works and it is widely used in communication systems wherever digital communication systems are coming into picture. So yeah, this was a little bit of theoretical as well as a practical demonstration of what is parity and how is even an odd parity scheme applied during communication. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood what exactly is parity and how it helps in error detection. And we also discussed the two different parity schemes that is even parity and odd parity. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you find this informational, share it with your friends so that even they understand this concept. And if you haven't yet subscribed already, come on guys, subscribe to this channel. It's free of cost and I'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial. Peace.